Hello everyone, this is The Board Game Lawyer, and it's Wednesday night, and I'm going to play some Marvel Champions, a game from Fantasy Flight Games. So tonight I'm going to play game 4.5 in my Rise of Red Skull campaign. The reason why I'm calling it 4.5 is because I lost game 4 of my campaign against Arnim Zola. Now as you may or may not know, I placed a build restriction upon myself so that I would only use cards from the core set and from the Rise of Red Skull campaign box throughout this campaign. And so the hero I went with was Spider-Woman. But since I lost game 4, I decided to up the ante. And that is, if I lose this game against Zola, I lose the campaign. But as a way to be somewhat kind to myself, I've unlocked some additional cards to play with. So I opened up the cards that come in the Captain America hero set, which are primarily leadership cards. And I also unlocked cards that come with the Black Widow hero set, which are primarily justice. So I'm going to stick with leadership and justice for this game. On the back of my campaign log, I wrote down game four is leadership and justice. So I'm going to stay with those two aspects because that's the build for Spider-Woman. Her Jessica Drew side says that I choose two aspects during, and I, during my deck building and I include an equal number of cards from those aspects. And so I've included an equal number of cards from, from uh, Hero or from uh, Leadership and Justice and... I have also included cards from Captain America and the Black Widow decks in my deck, Jessica Drew deck today. So, we'll get started. I've already got everything mostly set up here. So the Island of Dr. Zola reads that I need to search the encounter deck for the Hydra Prison, which I have right here. And I search for the uh, Bile Servant, and I put it right here. He comes into play with Tough, and the uh, Hydra Prison reads, When revealed, each player searches their discard pile or their deck, or their hand for a hero-specific ally. So that's uh, Captain Captain Marvel is our hero-specific ally. She cost four, plus the inherent one on the Hydra Prison. So this side scheme comes into play with five threat on it. Dr. Zola has 12 hit points, a scheme of two, an attack of one, with a retaliate of one. And then when we flip over to our Island of Dr. Zola... This reads that after resolving step one of the villain phase, I place a test counter here. When three or more test counters are here, discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until a minion is discarded. Comes into play with zero thread on it. Jessica Drew, in my campaign, she has the basic thwart upgrade, which is permanent setup. I get plus two hit points, so her 11 became 13, and I get plus one thwart. So ultimate bio servants on the table. There's no threat that starts on the island of Dr. Zola. And I'm ready to play. So Jessica Drew draws a hand size of six. So we draw Followed. I like that card. We have Finesse. We also draw the Power of Leadership. Another Finesse card. Two Finesse cards. A Self-Propelled Glide. And one more card is Contaminant Immunity. So I'm going to discard Contaminant Immunity since I do not have any damage yet. It does allow me to get a tough card, but it's just not worth it for two right now, I don't think. So I'm going to mulligan that card off. I'm also going to I'm going to hang on to Followed. And I'm going to hang on to the Power of Leadership. We'll discard Finesse, Finesse, and Self-Propelled Glide. Let's keep one Finesse, and we'll get rid of both of these. Let's see what we draw. So we got U.S. Agent. We draw Great Responsibility, and one more card, Inconspicuous. Remove a total of three threat from among schemes in play. All right, so there's our six cards. We have a special ability on Jessica Drew, which allows her to look at the top card of any deck. We'll look at the top card of my encounter deck, and it is an advance card. So whenever Dr. Zola schemes or attacks, likely this is the card that we'll see, which is a zero boost. So I liked having that on top of the encounter deck. That makes me feel a little bit better. Okay, so what I'm gonna do then is I'm gonna flip over to my spider woman side. She has a superhuman agility. Each time I play an aspect card, I get to add one thwart attack and defense to spider woman once for each aspect. So I think I will do that. I'm gonna play the followed card I believe. 
we're going to spend great responsibility to put followed out here on the Hydra Prism. I really like the followed card in Zola because it reads attached to a side scheme, max one per side scheme. When attached side scheme is defeated, deal four damage to an enemy. And so I could either remove that ultimate bio servant since he has four on him if I were able to remove that tough card, or I could do four damage to Zola, and I really like that idea. So we'll put that followed card right over there on the Hydra Prison. That is a Justice Aspect card, so we're going to mark her that she played a Justice Aspect card. So now her, her thwart is 1 plus 1 plus 1, so she's up to 3 now. I have Inconspicuous, the Power of Leadership, U.S. Agent. I do like U.S. Agent. Don't have quite enough to play U.S. Agent and the Inconspicuous card. So I think what I'll do is I'm going to go ahead and play the U.S. Agent onto the table. He does have Retaliate as well. When this character is attacked, deal one damage to the attacking character. So let's spend the three to put U.S. Agent on the table. That is another um, aspect. So now she gets her leadership aspect card that she played. So now she's up to four. Four threat removal. And so that cost me both of these. I'm down to one card, Inconspicuous. My economy was probably not maximized this time, which is okay. I think what we'll do, though, is she's plus three attack. She's four thwart. Right now, one, two, three, four thwart. And I think I'll do that. I think that I will... Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to thwart with U.S. Agent for one. He takes one, inconspic one, uh, one consequential damage for that. So we're going to remove one threat from the Hydra Prism. All right. That leaves us with four, and, hmm, I think what I'll do is I will go ahead and I will thwart with Spider-Woman to take four threat off of the Hydra Prison. Not probably the most ideal thing to do right now, right? Let's see. If I were to have done three damage to Dr. Zola, I would have had to take one Retaliate. But it's, it's very expensive to play Captain America anyway. So, or Captain Marvel is who's underneath the Hydra Prison. So what we'll do is we'll go ahead and thwart the Hydra Prison. And it reads, when defeated, remove this scheme from the game and return each ally beneath it to its owner's hand. So it's removed from the game. Here comes Captain Marvel. She's into my hand. So those are my two cards that are in my hand right now. I do have that followed card. It says attached to the side scheme. When attached side scheme is defeated, deal four damage to an enemy. It is a response. It is not an attack, so I don't believe I take any damage from retaliate. And so followed is done, and we'll knock Zola down to eight. So that's one of the cards that came in the Black Widow set. Either Black Widow or Captain America. That icon is a little too small for my old eyes to see. Maybe one of the extra cards that you get with Captain America. But it, it, regardless, it did not come in the core set and it did not come in the Rise of Red Skull campaign box. So we've done four damage to Zola. U.S. Agent's going to ready. We'll ready Spider-Woman. And we will keep these two cards or discard these two cards? I think I'll keep them. Let's see what we draw up. So she gets a hand size of five. So she gets great responsibility for justice and squirrel girl. 
So Squirrel Girl, I know that came in the Captain America set. So yeah, that that uh, followed card would have been one of the extra cards that comes in Captain America, if I can see the icon clearly enough here. Those are really small, smallest I've seen on cards in a long time. All right, so those are my five cards going into my next turn. Island of Dr. Zola, we're going to place one threat there. All right, and then we place one of our counters on there. Remember when we hit three, after after we, words we would have to draw an additional an additional um, minion onto the table, discard until we find a minion. All right, so Zola is going to attack Spider-Woman. We're going to let that happen because, remember, we have zero boost icons on our advance card. And so we will do one damage to Spider-Woman, knocks her down to 12. Ultimate Bio Servant is going to attack... U.S. Agent is going to block. So we do one damage to U.S. Agent, but he has a retaliate, so we'll be able to knock that tough card off of the ultimate bio servant with U.S. Agent. So we draw our encounter card, and it is caught off guard. Discard an upgrade or support you control. If no cards were discarded this way, this card gains surge. Now this is an upgrade that I control, but it's also a permanent upgrade, so I don't believe that I have to discard this card, but it will surge. So let's see what happens. If I'm incorrect, please correct me. Again, keep in mind, folks, that anytime you see any mistakes that I make, you are well welcome. You are very welcome to include that in the comments down below on this video because I'm learning just like many, many others are as well. All right, so our next card that we surge into is the Berserk Mutate. He has a quick strike. He does an attack of two, place one test counter, on the main scheme, that's if he was drawn as a boost. So his, his text is only a quick strike, but he does do two damage to Spider-Woman. And so do I want to block that two damage? Let me see what I got in my hand. No, I don't believe. I don't believe. I think I'll just go ahead and take the damage. Two damage on that quick strike takes me down to ten. spider Woman is going to begin her turn by clearing the markers that I had on there from the last round. I'm going to bring my other ones out as well. All right, so Spider Woman. We do have Squirrel Girl. And we have Inconspicuous, For Justice, and Captain Marvel. All right. We only have one threat on the main scheme, but that that six adds up really quickly, especially if I flip down to hero form. So if I bring Squirrel Girl out, I would bring her out with the response that says, after Squirrel Girl enter, enters play, deal one damage to each enemy. So let's spend great responsibility in Captain Marvel to put Squirrel Girl on the table. So immediately she comes into play. She does one damage to the Berserk Mutate. One damage to the Bio Servant. And one damage to Dr. Zola. Down to seven. All right. So if Squirrel Girl were to attack the Ultimate Bio Servant... I think that's not a terrible idea. Let's do one attack onto the ultimate bio servant. That'll knock him up to two damage. And he has two health left. I did play a blue card, a leadership card. So we're going to mark her as played such. Hmm. Do I want to do the damage to the ultimate bio servant? Let me think about that. Because she'll be, if I play for justice, if I spin for justice for inconspicuous, I can remove that threat from the main scheme. Ultimate bio servant does have to go. But she'll be up to attack of one, two, three. So I could have with Squirrel Girl put that attack onto the Berserk mutate and why don't I do that instead so we're going to move that attack that she did over to the berserk mutate 
And then with our Justice card, we'll spin that to play inconspicuous to remove that threat from the main scheme. I like that idea. So that will be a Justice card, and now Spider Woman's going to attack the Ultimate Bio Servant. Yeah, I think so. Let's go ahead and get the Ultimate Bio Servant out of the game. And so that's three attack onto him. So all my cards are spent. So we'll flip over to our Jessica Drew side, and it reads, look at the top card of any deck, limit once per round. Well, I'm more interested in what's in the encounter deck right now. So the encounter deck has one boost icon. I like that. So we'll put that right back on top. She's going to ready. We'll ready Squirrel Girl. We'll ready the U.S. Agent. And we will draw our hand size of six this time. So we draw Wonder Man. We draw Hawkeye, Jessica Drew's apartment, strength in numbers, the power of leadership, and one more. Is that right? Yep. Get ready. All right. I like the way this hand is looking. So let's place one threat on the island of Dr. Zola. We're going to put one of our counters over there. Dr. Zola is going to scheme for one plus two is three onto the island of Dr. Zola. And now we draw our encounter card. Let's see what we get. All right, so he has a laser rifle now. It says attached to the villain. He gets plus one attack. When attached villain attacks, the attack gains ranged. All right, so... No more retaliating on Dr. Zola while he's hanging on to that laser rifle. Not so bad. I'm glad there's not a surge on here. It's almost like a free turn, right? So now it's Jessica Drew's turn, and we have Jessica Drew's apartment that we could play. Yeah, let's do that. There's nothing else to do. Let's let's take a look at the top card of my deck. No. We're going to look at the top card of the encounter deck. The top card of the encounter deck is a gang up. Okay. One boost icon on that gang up card. All right, Jessica Drew. We're going to play Jessica Drew's apartment. Wonder Man. <clears throat> Wonder Man or Hawkeye? Either one of them can come into play with the power of leadership. Do I want to keep a hold of both of them? I think I'll spend... I'll hang on to Wonder Man and I'll get rid of Hawkeye. Okay, so Wonder Man, that also came in the Captain America set. So more cards that I've unlocked for this game. So we spent Hawkeye to put Jessica Drew's apartment onto the table. And now we will draw, exhaust Jessica Drew's apartment, search the top five cards of my deck for an aspect card, and add it to my hand. Let's see what I have in my hand so far. A lot of leadership cards. So we draw four Justice. So propelled glide, a venom blast, genius, and clear the area. All good cards. Let me see what I've got to spend. If I were to put out Wonder Man, I could play strength in numbers to exhaust three characters to draw three cards. And I do have get ready in my hand. So there's a big bruiser card that I would like to play with. It's Venom Blast. So I'll shuffle these cards back into my deck. And I'm going to add Venom Blast because it is a, a aggression card into my hand. <clears throat> Shuffling.
Sorry. Sorry for the cough. A little tickle in my throat today. So we're going to play The Power of Leadership to put out Wonder Man. So now we have four allies on the table. And then we're going to play Strength in Numbers to exhaust all of these guys. So one, two, this was exhausted. We went and found something. And three, to draw three cards with Strength in Numbers. Again, another card from Captain America's kit. That was, a, that was a really good kit. A lot of good cards in that kit. So we draw Hawkeye, Pheromones, ooh, and the Followed card. Mm, really like the follow card. Now we've got some choices. If I ready Wonder Man, I would have to exhaust, or I'd have to spend a card to attack Dr. Zola. That would cost me two cards to do that. see. Have I played cards already? I did. I played Strength in Numbers and Wonder Man. I'm going to rewind and act like we flipped Spider-Woman before we did those actions. There's been nothing happen other than just playing cards and drawing cards. So Spider-Woman will have a leadership cube marker on her and then I play Venom Blast. Deal five damage to an enemy. I could deal five damage to Dr. Zola. But I will take a retaliate if I do that. So if I were to get ready with both of these. Now that Pheromones, that's a good card too. I could stun and confuse Zola and that will give me a little bit more time. <clears throat> If he's stunned and confused, I don't have enough resources to play both of those Venom Blast and Pheromones. Shall I hang on to Venom Blast? Thinking. I also love Hawkeye, too, because we know that another, another critter is going to come out on this next turn. Yeah, that, that happens after resolving step one. No way to get around it. Hmm. So pheromones spin Hawkeye and followed to play pheromones. And then I could get ready to do some damage. Wow. Hmm. Three damage on Zola. One, two, three. He'll retaliate. That'll knock him down to four. If I... She's only at two right now. You don't win by ignoring this mastermind over here. We got to get rid of him. So if I do the Venom Blast, that'll do five damage. Yeah, let's do it. Got it. Got to take them out. So we're gonna use Pheromones. Yep. We're gonna use the uh, Venom Blast. We're gonna spin Pheromones and followed. Sorry, I took a moment to figure that out. Venom Blast and pheromones to attack Zola. Five damage onto Zola. Takes him down to two. And we add an additional marker onto Spider Woman. Now she can do an attack for three. Pack of three. So the only thing that I could do now is I can ready 
one of my heroes. And I think I will. We're going to ready U.S. agent. How about we do that? And we'll roll ready U.S. agent. Uh, Let's do the damage with Spider Woman. Spider-Woman's going to attack for three onto Dr. Zola. He will not retaliate because it takes him all the way down to zero, and I defeat side one of Dr. Zola. So Dr. Zola, side one, is defeated. That brings in this one. It says, when revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for test subject side scheme and reveal it. Oh, that would have been good to keep that other card. Oh, my goodness. Yes. So... Let's go find a test subjects side scheme. Did I put one in my discard pile? Let me, let me look there first. Because if I have one in my discard pile, nope, I don't have one there. So we'll draw one, take one out of our encounter deck. There's a test subjects. We'll place two threat on test subjects. Just really not a big fan of test subjects. Because it has a hazard icon on it, and it reads, When defeated, the first player discard cards from the top of the encounter deck until they discard a minion. So another reason to bring another minion out onto the table. Mm -mm -mm. Okay, so we can ready U.S. Agent to take out the Berserk Mutate, which is what I'll do, because none of these can muster up enough threat to get rid of the Test Subject card, so we will be drawing an additional card on, on Zola's turn, additional encounter card. And I do like Hawkeye. So I may just hang on to Hawkeye for a little bit. So we will get ready. We'll get ready the U.S. agent. He's going to do one damage. Consequential to himself. And one damage to the mutate. So that's one less mutant we got to worry about on the table. We'll hang on to Hawkeye. We'll draw our hand size of five, Skilled Investigator, Goliath, Self-Propelled Glide, and Quasar. And Dr. Zola, he did come into play with 14 hit points on him, so let's make sure that we do that. And we got a ready Wonder, uh, Wonder Woman, Spider Woman, U.S. Agent, Jessica Drew, Squirrel Girl, and Wonder Man. Okay. Not a bad hand going into the next round. I like it. Dr. Zola places one threat. Now it's up to five. The island of Dr. Zola is up to five, and we add that additional counter to the island of Dr. Zola. So we remove three of these test counters, and we, we, we draw cards until we draw a minion to put into play. So our first card is a Berserk Mutate, and he comes into play with Quick Strike. So he'll do two damage. And I think we'll block that damage with anyone. Will we block with anyone? Yes, I think we will. We'll block with Wonder Man. We'll quick strike Wonder Man or Spider Woman. Tell you what, let's just quick strike with on the Spider Woman, and we'll remove those three test counters. Now Doctor Zola is going to attack, and 
he is going to attack. We're going to block with Squirrel Girl. He will do deal one damage to each character you control. Oof. Hmm. One damage to each character you control. Well, we know Squirrel Girl's gone because he's two plus that. We do one damage to Wonder Man. One damage to U.S. Agent. And one damage to Spider Woman. Then the Berserk Mutate is going to attack. We'll absorb that damage with Spider Woman. That'll knock her down to five. And then we draw two encounter cards. So our first one is another concussive blast. What? Who shuffled this deck? Um, deal one damage to each friendly character. Ooh, all right. We're getting blasted. So Wonder Man takes another damage. U.S. Agent takes another damage, and that does him in. I better put our other encounter card over here before I forget about it. U.S. Agent damaged. Spider Woman damaged. Oof. All right, so now we have the ultimate bio servant. He comes into play with a tough card on him. There you go, Ultimate Bio Servant. Skill Investigator, Hawkeye, Goliath, Self Propelled Glide, and Quasar. If I play Goliath onto the table, that's it. That's all I can do on my turn. Spider Woman clears. Ooh, boy. Mm. Lots happening here. I do think that I'm going to play Goliath. Goliath comes out, and he... Yep. He cost four to put onto the table. Quasar. Wow, Quasar is good too, though. Let's take a look at Quasar. That might give me something extra I could do. When Quasar comes into play, after Quasar enters play, remove one threat from each scheme in play. I like that too. Hey, and if we put our skilled investigator out, that's just almost asking for too much. Almost asking for too much in this turn. And Spider Woman is hurting for health. But we do have Jessica Drew's apartment. So maybe? Maybe we get something worthwhile? If I put... Hmm, Hawkeye on the table. Yeah, he would do damage to a minion that comes out. Two damage, that is. To a minion. That would put Spider, Spider Woman up to a higher level as well. It's just... A, this, this, that's the bad thing about Zola. He just builds and builds and builds, and you really got to stop the man. I think we're just going to go all in on trying to get Zola out of here. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to take our chances. So we're going to put Goliath on the table. Yep, that's what we're going to do. That's a leadership card, so we mark Spider-Woman with that leadership card. Oh, that's too many cards. I can't play with... Uh... I can't discard anything for Wonder Man if that's the case. Let's take it back. Two, three, four, 
Uh, sorry to keep doing these take backsies, but but uh, I really want to use his ability before he's gone. And that's three attack. That would knock Zola down to 11. So if I brought Quasar out, which I think we will, we'll bring out Quasar. And we'll spend these three resources to do it. We'll hang on to that skilled investigator. So Quasar comes out. Response, after Quasar enters play, remove one threat from each scheme in play. So here we go, here we go. And he, come, and he is a justice character. So now I can spend... That skilled investigator says, as an additional cost for Wonder Man to attack, you must discard one card from your hand. So that's why I needed to hang on to that extra card, is because of Wonder Man's silly little text there. So Wonder Man is going to attack Zola, and he's going to do so for three. One, two, three. We won't even have to worry about so much with regards to retaliate, because the consequential damage will kill him. So, Wonder Man knocks Zola down to three. Then, we could take Spider Woman, and we can do two damage to Zola to take him down to nine. And then Quasar can attack Zola. I gotta take a damage for that. Quasar can attack Zola for two more damage. Down to seven. He takes one consequential and one more because of the retaliate. Now I will flip. Flip over to the Jessica Drew side. And I can look at the top card of my encounter deck, which is Zola's Mutate. Shuffle Zola's Mutate into the encounter deck. All right. Mm -hmm. And so Jessica Drew's apartment, if we exhaust that, I can look at the top five cards. Two, three, four, five cards, and I can add one to my hand. So the one aspect card that I will add to my hand will be Maria Hill. Adding Maria Hill to my hand, because I couldn't play any of the other cards that I just picked up. She's an aspect card. So we'll hang on to her. In the meantime, we'll ready Jessica Drew, ready the apartment, ready Quasar, and we'll see what happens. So we got one card, plus two, three, four, five, and six. For justice, energy, inconspicuous, clear the area, Venom Blast, and Maria Hill. All right, here goes nothing. Place one threat, Island of Dr. Zola. Place one counter here. Dr. Zola is going to scheme for two plus a special boost icon which says shuffle Zola's mutate into the encounter deck. We could do that. But the two will threat out the island of Dr. Zola. Move our test counter over here for now, and we'll take our three, th five threat off of the island of Dr. Zola. We'll flip to side 2A, which says, when revealed, each player searches the encounter deck and discard pile for a minion and reveals it and shuffles the encounter deck. Well, I think I know what I want. I'm going to go find another Berserk Mutate. Because 
because he has a zero scheme, and he has a quick strike, and I'm an alter ego for him. When revealed, each player searches the encounter deck, discard pile for a minion, reveals it, and shuffles the encounter deck. All right. We'll flip this over. It comes into play with one threat on it. It has that same forced response after resolving step one of the villain phase. Place one test counter here. Then if there are three or more test counters here, discard the top card until a minion is discarded. Put that minion into play. Engage with the first player and remove three test counters from this scheme. That is the text. That's where I messed up last game. I actually revealed it. I revealed a minion instead of putting it into play. There is a difference there. Putting... Revealing something means you read the text. Putting something into play, most in most cases, just means you just simply put that minion into play. Next, we have two. Oh, we got to do another. Let's see. We put uh, we put one threat. Now we got to put another threat because of the ultimate bile servant. He also schemes. Now we draw two encounter cards. Here's one, and here's two. And so the first one is Shadows of the Past. Reveal your set-aside Nemesis minion and put it into play engage with you. Reveal your set-aside Nemesis side scheme and put it into play with you. Shuffle the rest of your set-aside Nemesis encounter set into the encounter deck. If your Nemesis minion does not enter the game this way, this card gains Surge. Shadows of the Past. So in comes the Viper. While Viper is engaged with you, your hand size is reduced by one. So when we draw up our hand size, we reduce it by one. And she also has, when revealed, place an additional one threat here. So you add an additional hazard. It's an additional hazard icon, so another encounter card will be drawn. So two plus one is three. There's three. And then we shuffle our Hydra regulars and our Hail Hydra card into our encounter deck. Bear with me. There's just a little bit of extra. Whenever you draw that Shadows of the Past card, not only is there a wall of text to read, but you also bring out lots of extra fun peoples. And side schemes. Which, in solo play, I don't get to see the Nemesis cards as much. Because I just, either I don't make it that far into my deck, or, or I simply draw it for a boost card. So, or, or discarding it to find something else. So, the Viper is into play. Now we're going to draw Uncertain Loyalties. Uh-oh. Give the Jessica Drew player. You may flip to Alter Ego form. Already there. Choose to exhaust Jessica Drew to remove Uncertain Loyalties from the game or place three threat on the main scheme and discard this obligation. Well, I think I'm going to put the three threat on the main scheme. Unusual to use Part B. But placing three threat on the main scheme is not going to cause us to scheme out. So three threat onto the main scheme. That will end Dr. Zola's turn. What can I do to finish this game in better shape than three health? I also have a lot of minions on the table can't remember what the rule is by leaving minions behind. It's been a while since I played. So I definitely have the firepower to do the damage to knock out Zola. I could do five damage to an enemy. I can do two damage with Quasar. Let's clear the area for justice. Nothing's... Huh. 
really would like to be able to heal some more, but I don't think I can. But I will do that. I will heal for three. One, two, three. And we'll exhaust Jessica Drew to do that. Now, Jessica Drew's apartment says that I can exhaust it to look at the top five cards of my deck. So I only have three cards in my deck, and one of them is Contaminant Immunity. So I'll take that card into my hand. <coughs> yeah, Contaminant Immunity. So now if I flip over to my Spider Woman side, I can play Contaminant Immunity to heal for three and give me a tough status card. <clears throat> So now we're up to nine, so we're back almost all the way up to full strength, and I really like that. So I don't have anybody that's a guard, right? Viper's not a guard. <clears throat> I do have the Venom Blast. I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and finish the game off. So Quasar's going to attack for two, two damage, and he's out of the game. <clears throat> A little drink here. Now tickle in my throat. And then we're going to do the Venom Blast. Do the five damage to Dr. Zola. Takes him all the way down to zero. No retaliate because that finished him off. So that will end the game. Let's take a look and see what happens when I win? All right, let's take a look here. Scenario number four, Zola. Having defeated Taskmaster, we took on Zola. Then after Zola is defeated, it says, where is the stone, Zola? The Red Skull has it, mean hair in his, for in his fortress. What was once precious, your precious White House now belongs to the Red Skull. What progress have you made toward my ultimate design? I will soon be able to use the stone to conquer the world, Herr Skull. Supreme Leader, we are under attack. Okay. So we move on to the next portion of the story. We'll read that later. But as far as our victory is concerned, it says each player engaged with an enemy records that they're engaged with an enemy in the campaign log. <clears throat> Sorry. All right, so we are engaged with minions. So each player engaged with an enemy records that they're engaged with an enemy in the campaign log. So yes. Yes, we are engaged with an enemy. All right. Then also with victory, it says, if the Hydra prison side scheme is still in play, record the name of each ally underneath it in the campaign log. Those allies cannot be included in any deck for the remainder of the campaign. Well, the Hydra prison was defeated way, way early <clears throat> in this game. And it says, if the Hydra prison side scheme is not in play, each player in hero form may replace their basic condition upgrade with its improved side. So here's our basic thwart upgrade. Now we can flip it over to our improved thwart upgrade, which means that it has a permanent setup. I get plus two hit points. The hero gets plus one thwart, and then there's a response. After you defeat a side scheme, exhaust this card and draw one card. Hmm. All right, so we have the improved thwart upgrade. Do we mark that anywhere? Let's see. No, not necessarily, I guess. Basic upgrade, so now it's improved. All right, so expert campaign only. Record each identity's remaining hit points in the campaign log, as well as any cards added to their deck. So we had nine hit points remaining. So we'll cross out the 11 
and we'll make it nine now. That may keep us from having to get an obligation to get full strength going into our next game. So it looks like we may have been able to avoid, and I'll, I'll take a look at that and see if I want to do something different with that, but, but I'll worry about that in my next game. Okay, so I hope that you enjoyed watching my playthrough today. It looks like we were victorious, so we will be able to continue to move on. So I hope you enjoyed it. Tune in next time to see where our campaign goes from here. Red Skull looks like our next guy, and that's the conclusion of the campaign. So hopefully we can do well against him. You get one shot to defeat Red Skull, and that's exactly what I'm going to try to take. Uh, if you'd like to get in touch with me, you can shoot me an email at boardgamelawyer at gmail.com. If you enjoy watching these videos, you can like and subscribe. be glad to have you. Uh, thank you for watching today. I hope you have another great week, and I will hope to bring you another video again soon. Thanks, everybody.